Hello and welcome to Living on the Wire, week 12. Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? Already week 12. Just a couple more games to go before we'll be into the playoffs and the, well, whatever the opposite of playoffs are for those of the teams that will be joining me and the other end of things. But either way, uh, just two games left. So with the trades done as well and most of the big bye weeks done, there's not a lot of bye games left. It's kind of quieting down. But let's dive deep inside how our league spend their waiver wire budgets. And as always, let's start with big bid boys. And $19 were needed from Ross and the Gators to get Zonovan Knight. Now, I don't think Zonovan's a name. I'm hoping that I'm saying it wrong. But if that is his name, it seems awfully cruel. I'm pretty sure as a child I had Zonovan and I had to get the special cream that I had to put on twice a day to get rid of it. Etchy, etchy stuff. So I'm just going to call him Big Z. So anyway, to get Big Z, $19 were needed because four other teams were interested because he had quite an explosive game for the Jets, the undrafted rookie, uh, looking pretty good with Carter going out. And if Carter's not back, possibly he'll be in that backfield again next week. However, I at the Wildcats decided to go for what who I thought might be the less popular of the two so I could get him a little bit cheaper as I'm out of money and picked up Ty Johnson. Ty Johnson's played a little bit more in the past. Uh, you know, he... Didn't maybe look as explosive at the weekend, but he still picked up quite a lot of points. He might be touchdown dependent, but I think if Carter is out, they're going to share that backfield. So it's probably a bit of a coin toss as to which one is going to be the better deal and only time will tell. But I just had that little inkling that he'd be the less popular of the two, so stuck my money there and was pleased to pick him up. With Telfy sticking in a bid as well, my $5 looks to be relatively well spent because I have Carter. So the two guys obviously are just tied together on my team. And then Allen. Allen picking up the Browns defence, dropping the Dolphins. Initially, I thought that one's a bit weird, but then as soon as I looked at the slate and I realised that the Browns were at the Texans, I could understand why he's made that move uh, because the Texans team is pretty terrible and the Browns hopefully will be able to shut them out for a quarter or two and rack up some points. But who knows, because they might have the returning to Sean Watson and the Texans might be fired up and it might be a completely different game. I guess that's for Alan to find out. And then in another big game, the Dolphins are going to be up against the high-scoring 49ers. That one could turn out to be a bit of a shoot-off with the Niners having added you know, CMC to the team and looking pretty explosive. The Dolphins having that fiery offense and having all the talent that they have up front. I think Alan's probably just thought, I'll stay away from the shoot-off and I'll go for what's likely to be the low-scoring, boring game and get my defense some points. And he wasn't the only one. There was a couple of bids in there for the Browns as well. And then finally for our big bid boys, I scooped up Tasty Hasty. He had a great week. It's probably wishful thinking he'll have a week like that again. But I did have both my running backs leave uh, during the games this past week. So I might possibly need two running backs this week. So uh, just maybe wishful thinking, but... Fingers crossed, if I need him, he plays and plays well. And of course, my third running back is on IR and is in my R slot. So, yeah, there wasn't exactly a lot of options out there. And then... I don't know. On to our little biddy boys. And technically, there was only two little biddy boys today. We had Steve drop in... Uh, big Jacob Brissett because it could be his last game for the Browns as Deshaun Watson is due back, which is a terrible, terrible thing for mankind. But Andy Thorburn will be hoping that he plays well to cover his bye week. And Kenny Pickett, who's a little bit up and down, looked all right the last couple of weeks, so probably not a bad backup QB option there. And then Brian picks up Devontae Parker, but only for a minute, so I won't give that much time because he's going to drop again on the next page. Uh, yeah, Devontae Parker's really not lived up to the hype. He's really not been the, the player that I think a lot of Patriots fans thought he would be, and he's definitely not been particularly relevant in the, the fantasy 
games either. He's really just sort of been a pretty low level flex or buy option wide receiver. And I'm not too surprised Brian changed his mind as quickly as he did. And then Telfy. Telfy picking up Mike Boone. The old man is back. And with the Broncos having as difficult a time as they have, who knows, he might end up finding he spends quite a lot of time in that backfield, especially as they let go of Gordon. And he's just had to drop Elijah Mitchell, who unfortunately is going to be out for a few weeks, which is a real shame as that 49ers team was starting to look pretty special. Hopefully they've got the running backs to cover, and uh, Gregor's going to try and pick up one of those in a minute as well. <coughs> so, cheap as chips. Uh, as I just said, uh, Tyron Davis-Price getting picked up. He should be back from injury, should be playing. He could get some time in that backfield with people out as well. They're, they're not keen to run CMC as hard as, you know, the Panthers would have, which is totally understandable because they want him ready for the playoffs. And you know, if he's carrying any kind of little niggle or knock, they're going to try and pull him out. So he could be sharing that backfield if he's fit. So I can see exactly why Telfy has picked him up. And then again, Telfy picking up Green Bay. Green Bay are looking pretty shaky, but I think the hope there is that they'll be up against the Bears, and if Bears don't have their QB back and a few knocks, a few injuries, and their season's pretty much over as well. Green Bay also have a habit of beating the Bears, so I can kind of see why he's done that. But for me, the Panthers are just starting to look a little bit spicy. They're just they're starting to just look a little bit better. I don't know if it's the the change at coach. Uh, don't know if it's just the CMC leaving and just a little bit of breath of fresh air. They're not really playing for anything. Uh, Darnold's back and he had a good game. Yeah, just interesting to see what that Panthers team's going to do because they just don't look quite as terrible as they did at the start of the season. And then Steve-O picking up Marvin Jones. I thought about picking up Marvin Jones as well, but I've got quite a lot of those sort of eight, nine point kind of wide receivers anyway and really need a running back. So I kind of left him and I think this one's just Jones had a good game. Jacksonville picking up a bit of momentum. Good wins maybe starting to lose a little bit of the momentum so it's just yeah straight up kind of flex bye week cover wide receiver swap really and see we'll be hoping he does the job and then the rest of the afterthoughts this is it rounding up for the week snell's back benny snell jr's back that's a name i'd forgotten about and he'll he'll be quietly hoping that Harris and Warren are out for Pittsburgh and that he will be needed because if he is needed, I'm sure he's going to pick up a lot of points, but he is down the pecking order. So if those guys are fit, even if one of them is fit, that will drastically affect his numbers. But Alan Robinson's been doing absolutely nothing and probably unlikely to play all that much at the Rams for the next couple of weeks, especially with Stafford out as well. Kind of uh, nothing there really. You're hoping Snell's going to get a game, but if he doesn't, you've not really had to lose anything important. And then Brian wrapping it up with three big moves. Hunter Henry coming in for Mar Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack not really done anything since going to Denver. Uh, but then Denver haven't really done anything, so I don't think that's really his fault. Hunter Henry had a cracking game, and the Patriots just seem to be using their tight ends a bit better, especially since Mack's come back in and Zappi's gone back into the shuffle. I think Mack really likes relying on those, you know, short passes to the tight end just to get rid of the ball quickly and easily and not have to really look up too much. So, yeah, could be a good move to go at tight end. And then the last move that Brian made was also to pick up a tight end with uh, another player that I totally forgot existed. Daniel Bellinger due back for the Giants and he could probably get thrown in quite quickly as the Giants want to try and make that big push to possibly grab a playoff place. And so, in the meantime, you've got Hunter Henry, and then he might come back. I know Brian's been trying pretty much every week to find that tight end guy, so he'll be having his fingers crossed that one of those two guys does it. And then Brian, I think, looking as everybody has at the Niners, but Brian, as a Niners fan, will know all too well, obviously losing a running back. But the rumours are that Mason, Jordan Mason, might be coming in to do a lot of that backfield work and not so much price. Price perhaps not quite ready. 
just back from injury himself and having not played for quite a long time. If Brian's right, he's made a pretty smart move picking Mason up there. We'll be hoping that the, you know, the, the NFL insiders have given him good information. But only time will tell and the fantasy gods can be cruel. They can be kind, but to me they're usually cruel. And then we've got our awards to wrap up week 12. Ross, the big spender, obviously dropping that 19 bucks uh, to get himself a running back who he'll be hoping does him some justice there for that $19 spent. Greg's still saving up, but I suppose when you don't have massive injury woes, when your team just keeps ticking over and it looks like you're going to make the playoffs, you don't need to throw down that money. You can save that for when you're in the playoffs and you really need a player. You can just outbid everybody. So he's in a good position there. Mikey's got 50 bucks. I think Greg's at like 70 bucks, so he can outbid anybody for anything right now with ease and have a bit of change left over. And then the you tried goes to Gregor. I might be thinking, hey, Graham, Gregor signed roughly 1 million players. What do you mean he missed out? Well, Gregor picked all those players up after the waiver wire deadline because he missed out on all the players that he went for uh, the first time round. So he had to sort of scramble around looking for somebody to fill holes. I believe he went in for the two guys that I managed to pick up as well. So that was uh, pretty pleasing for me, especially as with a little bit of good fortune, a couple of wins for me at the end of the season could possibly have me overtake uh, Telfi in the league. So I kind of ran through that one as fast as I could. Uh, no time for jokes, no time for anecdotes, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm just going to check out and move on. As I say, some couple of tasty looking games this week with the Browns at the Texans. I'm all in for watching this Dolphins-Niners game because I think these are two teams that just look really fun to watch and have great offences. It'll be interesting to see how they match up uh, as both we will be hoping will make the playoffs. But as always, I'm not expecting anything too exciting for my fantasy team. Although for anyone who's interested, my basketball fantasy team is absolutely fantastic, even though I couldn't even tell you one player I have, because I don't have a clue what's going on. But anyway, good luck to you all. May the fantasy gods be kind, except to Robin. Robin, fuck you, Robin. I hope I finally get a win. I'm pushing for trying five. If I get all these last two wins, get myself up to five, possibly beat out Jago, and then I will call that a successful season. Well, that and avoiding the toilet bowl. Robin, I probably am going to see you in the toilet bowl at some point. So, good luck to you then.